welcome Geta um, Chorada, advisor to the president and spokesperson of Tigray Central Command. W uh, thank you for coming to the studio to, bri to brief us about the latest developments. Thank you. So where do we stand in terms of Tigray's resistance against this invasion, uh, this total war on Tigray? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite obvious. It's been quite obvious that uh, Abiy Ahmed and uh, his partner in crime, it has, has uh, for almost three years now uh, been waging all kinds of uh, uh, asymmetrical warfare uh, against Tigray. Uh, but it's well over 21 days now since uh, they came out of the closet and declared an open war against Tigray. And uh, we've been uh, waging uh, resistance against their own slot and uh, Tigray's defense forces, Tigray special police forces, militia forces, and the people at large, at large have been uh, making every effort possible and using every arsenal at their disposal to defend against the interest of Tigray, against the uh, invasion of Tigray. Uh, so as far as we're concerned, uh, we've been uh, doing everything in our capacity to pay them in their own coins. Uh, Abi has deployed literally every division except for probably one mechanized division in Ogaden to Tigray to suppress Tigray to kill as per his promise the children of Tigray so their mothers could cry. Isaias has been doing every effort he could, exerting every effort he could to get even with TPLF and the people of Tigray for obstructing his uh, pharaonic dreams of becoming the Kodio in this region. Okay, so we, 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 we've been bearing the brunt, but we've been fighting to the nail against them. Uh, and we have uh, honestly succeeded against all odds. Uh, despite uh, tactical setbacks here and there, where they get to occupy, not occupy, but at least enter towns, uh, which they bombard and then uh, loot wantonly. Uh, they have been losing thousands after thousands of uh, army personnel. And... Uh, our resistance has been very effective as far as we're concerned. That, that's all I can tell you. So uh, what signal is this invasion sending to the people of Tigray, to the uh, countries, the two countries involved in the war against Tigray, and also to the region and beyond? Look, one thing is, one thing should be clear. Abi is not here for, uh, as he claims, claims to be the case, not for the sake of law enforcement. You don't l enforce law through MiG fighters, training bombs against innocent people. Uh, tanks are not good materials for law enforcement, as, as far as I know. Uh, 155 millimeter self-propelled holsters raining their uh, their uh, um, their rockets on uh, helpless children are not ordinary materials of law enforcement as far as we know uh, so abi was in it because tigray and tplf represented the only obstacle uh, against his 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 authoritarian ambitions all over ethiopia isaias has issues Isaias is an autocrat in, in, uh, in Eritrea, but he still fancies himself a pharaoh, a pharaoh, a, mo a modern-day pharaoh who can lord it over the entire region. So he still sees uh, obstacle in, in the TPLF, 
in the people of Tigray. So they have a common enemy here. So they have deployed, Abi has deployed all but one division, probably mechanized division. I'm not sure if, if uh, he did it uh, consciously. He probably would, would, would deploy it uh, now that we have dealt with most of the divisions now. Uh, but Isaias has also deployed uh, more than 50% of his, his, uh, his divisions. And the signal is that these two power crazed, you know, power in psychology they would call them megalomaniacs, would stop at nothing to unleash war against anyone in any group that they think will stand in the way of their authoritarian ambitions. In fact, what Abi and Isaias are doing right now is sending tens of thousands of helpless youths as cannon fodders, which I can assure you our forces have been killing much to their consternation. I mean, we're not talking about killing a, a, an enemy that you feel excited about killing. We're talking about helpless people who are being flogged into fighting. And then, you know, we're talking about thousands, if not tens of thousands of people getting killed simply because Abi has a deadline to make. That's, that's very unfortunate. Isaiah has an agenda which is humiliating Tigray, and Abi thinks the only obstacle that he faces uh, in, his, in his quest for authoritarian and achieving the authoritarian ambitions is Tigray and TPLF, and then he wants to uh, sacrifice tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if need be, of Ethiopians, so he could achieve his, his, his deadline. That's what I can say. It's very unfortunate. But Tigray has been fighting and fighting to the nail. We're, we're, we're fighting and we'll continue to fight. Uh, talking about de Abi's deadlines, how do you compare it to the uh, recent encounters, military encounters, on the ground. Look, Abi is the kind of guy who thinks everything works according to his poorly written plans on a paper. So he must have told the likes of Prahanu Jula that he wanted his campaign over by Friday or by Wednesday or by Monday. And that I know for a fact he wanted it to be over last last Monday, maybe Friday, and then it didn't work out, and then and he also likes to keep shifting the goalposts, and he said it would be over by Friday, and then it wasn't over, and the other day he was telling people on record that his forces will be in Ma'ala on Monday. And now he realized his forces or his tanks are not going to be in Ma'ala on Monday. So he comes up with a new deadline where, where um, uh, as it turns out, I am offered another 72 hours to hand myself over. Okay. And the people of Tigray are being told that unless they hand, them, they, they hand themselves over within 72 hours, and then they'll... They. And what is strange is note what he says about uh, putting timetables for people to to hand themselves over or to humiliate themselves as it were. What is strange is he does it in a so shamefaced way, sh in a shameless, shameless manner, that he doesn't even see the contradiction of what he's been saying for, for the last couple. The thing is, Abi would have liked to swallow us alive 100 years ago. Pardon my exaggeration, but he couldn't do it. And then he tells the rest of the world that he, was, he would do it tomorrow, and then it wouldn't work out, and then he keeps telling the entire world that 
he's going to do it 72 hours later. And even more strange is the fact that he comes out in public that if within 72 hours something doesn't have happen, that people fail to hand me over to him, I don't know where they're going to find him, then he would bombard the city. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm particularly interested in reading history books. I'd be lying if I, if I say I have encountered people who, who openly declare their intention to, to bombard the city simply because some you know, difficult people like myself and Deborah Zion uh, are not handed over to him. It is strange, it's downright strange. Why is he doing it? You know, he is a prisoner of his own flimsy excuses, his own borrowed dreams, his own promises. So he promised to people, maybe to Isaiah, that he would take over Magala by Monday and it, it's not working, and then he wants to make sure there is another chance. But the 21st Division today was absolutely decimated. It was supposed to have found a magic wand towards realizing Abi's dreams. It didn't. And Eritrea's forces, the northern side of the front, are still suffering the same, the same fate. Uh, it will continue. They will keep fighting because they have to t meet a timetable, which Abi thinks he needs to meet, because he had already promised to people that he would do it on Monday. Which Monday? Nobody knows. What next? What will this war be taking? What form will it Look, take uh, from what, now on? What we are doing right now is we're conducting people's war. It's not like uh, we're going to match every division for every division. Um, Abi has deployed every, every division in Ethiopia. The last division was a 22nd division, which was in Wallaga. It's now deployed in, in, in Tigray. And so what we have is, Isaias has deployed more than 24 divisions now. So we dealt with the uh, commando division in Iraqa Hamus yesterday. It was routed. I don't think they will stop, because they have ambitions. They don't care about the youth. They are um, uh, sending as cannon fodders. They don't care about the helpless people they are sending our way so our forces could kill them to the point of exhaustion. They don't care about their people. They don't care about what consequences such moves as they are making are going to bring about. So they will continue to send thousands after thousands and for us, the, the best thing for us to hope is that the rest of the country will wake up to the fact that Abi is trying to realize his borrowed dreams at the expense of tens of thousands of Ethiopians. But for us, the people of Tigray, fighting against any invasion whichever way it comes, is what we're going to do, what we have been doing, and we'll continue to do so. But it's going to be a people's war, and people everywhere will be fighting the aggressor, the invader, wherever they see it, wherever they find it, and will prevail. And finally, is Tigray being properly understood by the international community in this war? Is it being properly characterized? And, and also, if, do, you, do you still see if peace has a chance? Well, I, I, peace is, there always is a chance for peace. But it's, con it's contingent upon whether the, the rest of the world uh, thinks pe peace has a chance. That's where uh, the international community comes in. The international community is a motley crew. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a mixed bag. I mean, last, probably the other day, I was uh, reading 
a printout of uh, Tibor Nagis and uh, the Michael Rayner, Ethiopia's um, uh, Amer well, uh, America's ambassador to Ethiopia. And you, you wouldn't be mis mistaken if you assume that these are people in Abi's cabinet. They obviously were more interested in 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 uh, creating a sort of make-believe story about Abi's benign intentions than playing a very positive role as as uh, as, as leaders of. Uh, at least as the diplomats of a uh, uh, powerful, powerful country uh, in the world. So if the international community, for example, takes its cue from the Americans, obviously it's, it's going to be... But we know for a fact the international community has been expressing its concerns as well. But simply expressing concern is, is, is not good enough. Abi needs to be told in no uncertain terms that his his um, his his uh, shenanigans with Isaias are not only costing Ethiopians dearly, but also will be a drag on the efforts to create a stable sort of region in 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 in, in uh, I mean, stable region, Horn of Africa region. Uh, while I can appreciate some efforts by the international community, members of the international community, but the fact that the international community still is worried about being png being declared persona non grata by Abi, than clearly pointing out the excesses of Abi's reckless moves. You know, I, I heard Tibor Naji thanking the, the government of Eritrea for not responding to Tigray's provocations. For God's sakes, Tigray didn't provoke. We have 24 divisions, Eritrean divisions in Tigray. And it's very unfortunate. International community, the U.S. government included, are barking up the wrong tree. We are the aggressed, not the aggressors. We are the victims, not the villains. And we know we have justice on our side, and we'll fight to the finish, and we'll prevail. Getachi Oreda, advisor to the president and spokesperson of Tigray Central Command, thank you for your updates and reflections. My pleasure.